Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be primarily about keeping your battery healthy and in hot weather. The Prius uses a nickel metal hydride battery and a nickel metal hydride battery has temperature limits for its performance. So you'll see here I've written down some, cheat, it's basically a cheat sheet here for both charge and discharge temperature limits. Now these are self-imposed and it's more of an arbitrary number from my research that I've done online, but really this is the max and minimum temperature that the battery can physically give or accept current depending on the condition of the temperature or your environment. Now when you're driving the Prius, especially in the summer, your battery can get really hot and you'll notice here that the charge limit of 113 degrees is actually cooler than the inside of the cabin on some hot summer days. So that number is very important, um, as is the discharge limits. And I know negative four and 149 are not necessarily outside temperature you know, marks that we will see, but both of these numbers are not absurd when it comes to be a hot summer day. 149, 113, we can easily see those numbers inside the car. So I'm gonna get, provide some really nice tips and some tricks on how to keep that battery temperature cool and your efficiency up. Now, if your temperature of your hybrid battery exceeds 115 degrees, you'll start to see your efficiency in your car drop. And that is because the Prius will impose a discharge limit and a charge limit on the hybrid battery, which essentially restricts this car to a small engine four cylinder car. And then actually in some cases, if the temperature gets up high enough, your gas engine will stay running and will not turn off. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So a couple of ways the Prius manages the battery temperature. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Model 3. Some of you may be familiar with the Nissan Leaf, both of which are electric cars. The Model 3 actually uses active cooling and uses liquid coolant. The Nissan Leaf has actually been highly criticized for only using air cooling and having a relatively large battery that does accumulate quite a bit of heat. And the Prius actually uses air cooling as well. Back here in the back seat, we have an air vent. Now, it may not be known, and some of you may already know this, but some of you may not. What kills battery are two things. A high charge rate, high temperature, um, and some, some would argue that keeping it at a high rate of charge would also be very harmful on a battery. The same is true with lithium ion, NICAD, lead acid's a little bit different, but all these batteries hate heat. The Prius battery is no different. NICAD and nickel metal hydride both hate heat. So it's important that this vent back here in your back seat, this is the passenger rear side, is never blocked. Keeping that free of debris and understanding that if you do have a passenger, if they could sit in the behind the driver's side, that would be ideal. But if you have a full car and you can't avoid it, that's fine. Just make sure that there's nothing blocking the vent other than a passenger if, if it's desired or needed. Now, knowing that and knowing our air comes from the back seat, the next best thing we can do is always use auto for our air. Now, using auto does a couple things, and some of you may be able to hear it in the background of the video. But when you use auto, we will only cue the compressor So you probably heard that hum there. The compressor is turning on and off only as it's needed, which is really efficient compared to just blasting the AC or leaving the temperature down at low or 60 and then adjusting your fan as needed. Leaving it at auto and adjusting your temperature is gonna be the most efficient way to use your battery. I personally leave it at 70. This does a couple things and the heat throughout the car and the air conditioning throughout the car will never be perfect. But when you leave it at auto and at 70, it's going to try and keep the inside of the cabin at 70 degrees. Now, when you're a driver and you're sitting in the driver's seat, that 70 is pretty accurate. When you get to the back seat, 70 is definitely not the temperature that you're going to be sucking up in that air intake. You're probably going to be closer to sucking up a temperature of 75 or even 80 degrees, depending on if you've been parked outside. Now, in a little bit, I'm going to be showing you what app you can use to monitor the both the air inlet temperature and your battery temperature, as well as monitor your 
discharge and charge limits with a application that you can actually download and it will work in tangent with an ODB2 reader. Now this one, ODB2 reader I got on Amazon for $20. Uh, it connects via Bluetooth. It's a very generic reader. Um, it only supports about two reads per second, which is actually plenty to run the hybrid battery fan. Uh, and we can override it and make sure our battery is at a nice cool temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the app and I'll show you how that one works. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened my app and the app I use is called Hybrid Assistant. So Hybrid Assistant is a free mobile app to download on the Android App Store. Now what's so cool about this app is it will tell you a lot of information about what's going on in the hybrid car. In this case, it's a Prius, but this does work with a multitude of hybrids across the market, which makes it such a valuable resource for someone who's looking to make sure their battery temperature is in a safe range. So what's so cool here is right in the middle of our screen, we have our battery temperature of 104 degrees. Um, and you may or may not be able to see my stylus, but if you can, that 104 degrees is the temperature of our hybrid battery currently. Now I can actually click on the battery in the bottom right hand corner, which is currently at 44% state of charge. And now I'm gonna see my CCL or current discharge, or sorry, sorry, my current charge limit and my discharge current limit. So I'm at negative 23.5 kilowatts for my current, uh, or my uh, charge current limit. Uh, now this 23.5 is generally at negative 25 kilowatts. So I'm actually somewhat limited here for my regen braking. And then my discharge current level is 21 kilowatts. That's what we would expect. That's also normal. And if you remember, um, that's actually relatively normal because our discharge temperature can go up to 149 degrees. So we would expect to not limit our discharge limit or discharge current limit until a much higher temperature. And this will go down if our hybrid battery were to be at a higher temperature. All right, couple other things on this app. The 75 degrees that you see right here, that to the left is going to tell me my battery inlet temperature. And now I have other videos queued up with more detailed information on how this application will work. I will do that at a future date, but focusing just on our battery temperatures today, there's a couple different functions we have on controlling our battery temperature. So 75 is considerably lower than our 104 degrees. And you'll notice without pressing any buttons, this three is telling my fan speed. I can actually manually crank the fan up to max speed by pressing once anywhere in this box. It'll outline it in yellow to indicate that we're trying to crank up our fan. And you may be able to hear, if I put my phone near the fan here, that fan is queued up to max speed. And you can actually hear it. It does spin at a pretty high rate of speed, similar to the blower that powers your air conditioner. Now, while that runs, it is going to more aggressively cool that battery. The other thing you can do is press this again and you'll see an A. Now this A is for automatic control. Now we set our automatic control limits in the settings down here on the bottom left. If I click that settings tool icon, it'll bring up a window here where I can then hit settings. And then all the way near the bottom, I have some temperature control settings for my hybrid battery. There's a switch to turn the HV battery fan control on or off. And you'll see here it says automatic fan management for battery cooling and warming. So this is probably the most simple option for someone who wants to control their battery temperature but not think too hard about it. Then you have your max battery temperature. And right now that's at 41 degrees Celsius. If you remember right, 45 degrees Celsius was at that 113 degrees or that charge limit temperature that we discussed earlier in the video. Now, 45 degrees is pretty warm and the optimum temperature is between 32 degrees and 113. I personally have mine set at 35 degrees Celsius because I want a more aggressive temperature management. Now, the obvious disadvantage with this is that your fan's going to run more often, which means that you'll may want to clean it at a higher rate or your fan actually may go bad earlier than it normally would, which could result in you needing to replace your hybrid battery fan. Thankfully, that is an easy enough solution and definitely worth, in my opinion, having that fan run more often. Also, typically when I'm in my car, the fan is running um, depending on how hot the day is and how what the temperature is in my car. So I would notice if that fan went bad and I'm always keeping an eye on my battery temperature as well to know if it's dirty, then I need to clean it. 
Knowing all of that, I'm keeping mine at 35 degrees Celsius. I'll hit the green check mark and I'm good to go. Now, it's not winter, but winter is coming eventually. And we'll see that 23 degrees Celsius, and you probably just heard my fan kick on. That's our minimum battery temperature. Now, if you remember, that really is nowhere near any of our current temperatures, and we will still see decreased performance from our hybrid battery at lower temperatures. It increases internal resistance to the battery and also introduces those charge and discharge limits as well. So knowing this, I can tell it here to turn on the fan and have it stop when, it, when it's warmed up to the temperature that I choose. Well, 30 degrees is pretty darn warm, especially in winter. I would have to have my cabin pretty warm for that. So that's why I have mine set right around 20 degrees Celsius. Now, if you remember, the difference between our charge limits and discharge, discharge limits was between zero or negative 20 for our charge and discharge and 45 or uh, 65 degrees for discharge limits. So between zero, 45, negative 20 and 65, we're nowhere near any of that in our limits here. Um, but I keep mine at around 20 just because if it's warmer in my car than the hybrid battery is, the fan might as well be running to heat up that battery if it's too low and I have a discharge current limit or a charge current limit. Once I hit that green check mark, I can scroll down a little bit further. There's one more setting that I want to address, and this one is important, and that is this one here, this fan probe. So it says here, periodically activate the fan at a low speed for de better temperature reading. Now what this means and how this works, if your fan, so you've just got out of your car or just got back into your car from being outside for quite a while, if your car has been sitting in the sun and it's very hot inside, that fan probe may be reading a temperature that's much higher than it actually is in your car. Especially if the AC is running at full blast, the temperature, the ambient temperature in your car may be closer to 80, but your hybrid battery may be close to 100 degrees, but it thinks that the air inlet temperature is over 100 degrees as well, just because it was sitting in the sun and that plastic inside near that fan probe is rather hot. You could be cooling your battery, but instead the Prius doesn't know to run that fan every now and then unless we check this box. So I'm going to check that box. I'm not going to go over the rest of these. I will go over those in a future video, but I'm going to leave those as they are and hit this back button. And you'll see here that we must restart the hybrid assistant to activate changes. To do that, we hit the power button here. It'll ask if you want to quit. We'll hit yes and reload the app. All right, with the app restarted, it will reconnect to our ODB reader. In the bottom right, we can see our read rate. So once that's above about 1.5 or so, we'll hear our fan kick right back on. And you notice now when I have it set to A, it's gonna kick that fan speed up automatically. I don't have to press in this box. So all I have to do as an Android user is leave this app connected. And what's so cool about this app too is it will actually automatically stay active in the background. So I don't need to have this screen on or mounted on my dash. I can leave this in the background, lock my phone, plug it in, whatever I do for my normal routine on my way to work, and I'm good to go. Now you'll notice our temperature's already dropped from 104 to about 98 degrees. That is a pretty substantial drop in the short, well, it says 46 seconds, but I've been in here for much longer than that. Uh, I think it's about, yep, about eight minutes. So eight minutes, eight degrees, that's pretty good. And if you keep this on while you're driving, you'll continue to maintain that low temperature even while you're using your car. Now this is a massive, massive difference as heat is one of the biggest killers of batteries. If you can do this while also monitoring your charge and discharge limits, and you'll notice here that our charge limit has now increased in minus 25, we now have a larger efficiency for our braking. And same is true for your charging. So you've probably noticed in those really hot summer days that you may lose some efficiency. Your efficiency may go way down. Your AC may be cranked up. There may be a lot of factors that are draining away your hybrid efficiency, but this is one of the biggest ones, is the hybrid battery temperature l effectively limiting and crippling your ability to get regenerative braking and also use your hybrid battery for those low speed starts. So I think, I, I hope this was helpful. Um, and I, like I said, I use this every day. I am a firm believer in this and my hybrid battery is in good shape. In a future video, I'll show you how to use this battery check as well to test the capacity of your hybrid battery. But I highly recommend this app, highly recommend that we all are using the temperature monitoring and keeping our hybrid battery temperature within a normal limit. 
You'll also notice the battery turns yellow when it's at a higher temperature. Once it gets to 95, it should change to a different color here. Um, but yeah, great app. You've already seen my temperature drop quite a bit here, almost 10 degrees now uh, from what it was at when I first started this recording. Um, but yeah, that is how you can monitor and augment your hybrid battery temperature in the hot days of summer. Um, I'll show you what this looks like in winter, but in winter, heating up the battery is actually a little bit trickier. Again, future video for that one. If you like this video, thought it was helpful, please drop a like. If you have any comments, I like to respond to all comments and questions as they come in. I find that most helpful for both you guys and for myself. We all get to learn something new. Also, if you thought this video was great and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.